The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello, my name is James and welcome back to Workbench Wednesday. In this series, we look at the tools on your electronics workbench. We're kicking off a series on soldering tools. And because soldering is such a huge topic, I'm going to break the videos up into multiple episodes. In this one, we're looking at upgrade considerations for a soldering station. In fact, whether you have no iron or a complete rework station, my goal is to introduce you to something new. Some of you watching either have no soldering iron or only this simple type. It's basically a heating element that connects to AC mains. Now, the good news is if this is your only iron, then you've unlocked the first upgrade, which is owning a soldering iron. There are two or three limitations to this tool though. The first is that there is no variable temperature control. And second, there is no electronic feedback. Instead, these irons are thermally regulated. And that's just a fancy way to say that they heat up based on its thermal mass. And that's it. So then who is this type of iron good for? Well, if you only have one or two soldering projects or are extremely budget limited, then this iron is better than no iron. However, a very small upgrade can result in a big step in soldering. Oh, do you remember when I said two or three limitations? Well, the third is sort of a joke among electronics enthusiasts. You see, we call these irons fire starters because if you leave them unattended, they could accidentally start a fire. Next up is the soldering station. Even the most basic station solves at least one of the previous problems, which is the ability to control temperature. A low cost station usually has a knob that has numbers that go from like one to 10, even though we know it should go to 11. So a step up from a generic dial is an analog temperature control like on this Weller WES-51. And a step up from that is the WE-1010, which has a digital temperature control. To me, choosing between the analog knob or digital display is a personal preference. The most important aspect here is the ability to change temperature. Finding the right temperature will depend on the tip that's on the iron, the type of solder, and the actual workpiece. But we'll cover more on that in the later videos. Oh, and soldering stations usually come with some type of stand. So that means they solve all of the problems from the previous iron. Now, my guess is that most of us in the Element 14 community have something like this, at least at home. But if you're like me and you solder on a regular basis, this simple station might not be enough. So let's look at the next step in the upgrade path. This base station is an example of Weller's WX or professional line. Now, other than the capacitive touch dial for temperature, it looks about the same as the other one, doesn't it? So then what makes these two things any different? Well, the WX has more sophisticated features. For example, it has presets for multiple temperatures. If you switch between tips or solder types, this can help save you time. In a professional setting or shared environment, these preset temperatures can be locked. So one thing I found funny is that when my unit arrived, the default language was German. Now, obviously it's because Weller is based in Germany. So you do have to go into the settings menu and change the language. Well, unless you can read German. These units also can recognize when different tools are attached. One benefit is that it remembers the temperatures for each of the different types of tools. Which brings us to the next upgrade. Multiple tool types being available. For example, here's a 65 watt and a 120 watt pencil style soldering iron. But wait, that's not all. You can also get the super cool looking surface mount tweezers as well. Similar to this unit, there is something called the WXA2N. That has an additional heating channel and an air pump. The pump drives a hot air reflow tool. Coming back to the soldering irons themselves, let me show you what I like most. 
it's possible to change tips while the iron is hot and not burn yourself. Well, I mean, you could burn yourself, I just don't know why you would. The great thing about the WX series is that the tools from one head unit can be used on another. So if you invest into solder specific tools and then decide to upgrade to a multi-channel unit, you can protect some of your investment. Which brings us to the final step in the soldering upgrades. Though I suppose a reflow oven and a selective wave soldering setup would be the ultimate upgrade, but I doubt my HOA allows that. Now we come to a well-equipped solder reflow workstation. By the way, when I say rework, I'm talking about soldering tasks. There are three things you can do with soldering equipment. You can solder, desolder, or the combination, which is rework. In a professional context, it's the process of repairing or literally reworking a board after it's gone through a production process. This is the WXR3. There are three heater channels and several air channels. This thing has all kinds of pumps. For example, there is an air pump to operate the hot air reflow tool, and then there's a couple of vacuums. One vacuum is used with the desoldering tool. Now, I don't know about you, but when I look at this, I sort of think of something that belongs in the dentist office. But wait till you see how well this thing works. The other vacuum gets used with the pick and place tool. So with this unit, you can solder parts onto a brand new board or replace parts on a populated board, whether it's through hole or surface mount. You could also share the channels among multiple benches, which you might think about when you make this kind of investment. Oh, and when we get to the surface mount soldering video, Using this kit, I have a bunch of cool stuff to show you, but you're gonna have to subscribe or come back to see when that one comes out. Speaking of cool stuff, here's some things that you're going to see throughout this soldering tool series. As I said in the beginning, I have a couple of other videos on soldering planned, and since they're in the planning stage, you get to help create them. I want to know a couple of things from you, you know, the person watching this very video. Let's say you're new to soldering. In that case, I'd like to know some of the questions that you would like to see addressed. And if you're experienced with soldering, then what are some of your favorite tips to share? Head over to element14.com slash workbenchwednesday. There you can share your questions or tips. I look forward to seeing what everybody sends in. For now, thank you for watching another Workbench Wednesday.